In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the oil pressure sensor screen in this 2007 to 2013 Chevy Silverado. This is located in the back side of the engine underneath the intake. Let's get into it. We're going to disconnect the battery using a 10 millimeter socket. Loosen up the negative terminal. If you need to take this bracket off to access it, you can take these bolts out with a 13 millimeter socket. Otherwise, you can reach underneath. And grab the cable. Slide it up and out of the way. Now I'm gonna remove the engine cover. Just grab underneath here, pop it up and slide it out. Now we're going to take the worm clamps off for the snorkel. Use an 8 millimeter socket. Loosen that one up. And over near the throttle body, loosen that one up. Now just use a trim tool. Separate the coolant hose from this bracket. Move that aside. And there's a vacuum hose right here. Just pop this off just comes off and just pull the snorkel up and out pull it off over here and then it comes up disconnect the map sensor right here just push down on the tab and slide it off now I'm going to take this nut off, use a 10 millimeter socket. Pull that out. And this bracket is loose. Now we're going to take this plate off, use a 10 millimeter socket, take these two bolts out first. On the back bolt, I'm going to use a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench because you can't access it with a socket. Take that bolt off and take this plate off. Slide it out. Disconnect the connector on the alternator right there and just push down on the tab. Then you have a little bit of slack with this, these wires. You want to pull these up and out of the way. I'm just going to use a bungee cord and just tie it up. Good. We want to disconnect the fuel injectors. There is a safety clip. You want to just use a pick, get underneath this clip. And just pull it up. And then you can push on the tab and slide it off. You want to do that to, there's four on this side and four on the other side. If you have to, you can try pulling it up in the front like that and slide those out and get those all off and then you're going to do the same on the other side take all the connectors off of those injectors and disconnect this hose right here there's a little tab on the back you just slide it to the right and it, you can pull that off. And then now you can come on this side. Disconnect this connector right here on the purge solenoid. Just slide the tab over, slide it out, and out of the way. Taking a straight blade screwdriver, going right in between the bracket and the solenoid. You're gonna pry the bracket over a little bit. Then this will slide up. And we can disconnect right here, just push down twist it a little bit, and slide the solenoid off. This hose right here, you want to follow this back to where the valve cover is. And then there's another little tab you got to slide, and then you can pull that out. And when you're trying to take this hose off, this cannot pass over this stud. You don't want to bend this out of the way, or you could break the plastic. So we're going to take this stud off. Using a 10 millimeter socket, take this off. 
If you can't get a socket over that, you can just use a 10 millimeter wrench. And take that off. Now take this pipe and we can slide it out like this. And then you can disconnect it right here. It slides right out. In the fuel line, we want to bleed off the pressure. So we're going to take this cap off right there. You want to use a rag or an absorbing mat. Just get underneath here because you're going to lose a little bit of fuel. And then it's always a good idea to wear safety glasses while you're doing this. And then just take a screwdriver or a pick and just on the Schrader valve just push down. I'm just going to cover it so I don't get splashed. And just a little bit of fuel comes out. It's just to relieve the pressure. Good. Now I'm going to take this clip off, just grab from the back and slide it forward. That's just a lock or a retainer. Now I'm going to take a rag underneath the fuel line. We're going to disconnect that. You're going to lose a little bit of fuel doing this. And we're going to need a special tool to slide in there. Fuel disconnect tool. Pull the line forward towards the front of the vehicle and push the tool in. Again, you should wear safety glasses doing this. And then with the tool pushed in, then you can grab the line and slide it back. And the line comes off like that. Just put the rag over there. And then I'll just grab the tool, slide the tool off. Disconnect the connector right here. Just use a pick. There's a little lock on there. And then you push down and slide that off. Then this wire is going to be in the way for the alternator. You want to take that off. Just slide this boot back. And then there's a nut. I'm going to take a 10 millimeter wrench, loosen up the nut right here. nut off and it's important then you disconnect the battery for this you don't want this to arc out just so I don't lose that nut I'll just put that back on there now on the side of the intake there is eight millimeter bolts you're going to use an eight millimeter socket take those off don't get those confused with the fuel rail bolts we're going to leave the fuel rail attached so loosen those up caged so you don't have to pull them out. So there's five on this side and there'll be five on the other side. And if the wires are in your way, just move those out of the way. Those are all loose. Now just grab the intake, rock it up, pull it up, and just you want to tip it a little bit. Watch out for the wires. Slide it forward. And it slides right out. 
this hose that goes to the brake booster. If you follow that along, you can see it on the brake booster and just grab it. Right here, and we'll just rock it back and forth. You're gonna hear a little bit of air. And it just pops out. And just take that off. And slide it up. The intake out, we're just gonna take these bolts out, just twist to the side. This back one on the passenger side has a little bracket, just pull it out of the bracket. Disconnect this connector right here. Just use a screwdriver or a pick and move the lock tab up. Push down on the connector, slide it off. To take this sensor out, there is a special socket you can use, but you don't necessarily need it. You can use a one and one sixteenth socket. And take the sensor out. And down in the hole where the sensor was, there is a screen. We have to take that out. We're going to use a pick. You can see it with the mirror right there. Go down in there. And you pull it out. It's OK if you rip it. You just want to replace it. And take the new screen. You want to put a little bit of oil on that O-ring right there. And we'll line this up and push it in. You can push it down. There you go. Now take the sender, line it up. If you're reusing the old sender, you want to put a little pipe sealer on there just to keep the threads from leaking. I'll tighten this down. Then you want to torque this to 26 foot-pounds. Connect the connector, line it up, lock it down, push down on the lock. Now line the intake up. Just slide it in place. Make sure you go under the wires. Get that lined up. Make sure you take this hose over here. So you run this hose behind the wires. And reattach it to the brake booster. Slide it in slowly. That's good. Now take the bolts, get the bolts all started. And put these bolts in on the other side. And then one in the back underneath that bracket.
and then get those all started. Snug those up. I'm starting from the middle and working my way outward. And just snug those all up. Now we're gonna to torque these bolts, working our way from the center outward. The first sequence, we're gonna to torque these to 3.7 foot-pounds. And just work your way out. forward. And back. All the way forward. This one. And that back one. After you do that one time, then go around again and torque them again at 7.4 foot pounds. And this front one. And it's back. Last one. Yep. 
that's it. And take the fuel line, line that up, and lock it down. You can take that lock. It's going to go on this side and lock that down as well. And I take this tube, slide this in position here, and then twist it. Go around the other tubes. And then you want to attach that to the valve cover in the back. And just lock that in place. Now put this stud in here. And snug that down. This bracket right here where we bent this tab, we just need to bend it back. Just use a straight blade screwdriver. Bend it back a little bit. That should be good. You can take this solenoid, line this up, lock it into the hose, and push it down on the bracket. And then the hose over here goes on the intake, lock that down. Now I'm just going to take the bungee cord off, move the wires back in position. Those are all in position. Now we'll start connecting connectors. We got the map sensor right here. Lock that in. The alternator, plug that in. This wire goes to the solenoid right here. Connect that. Then you have the fuel injectors. Now line the fuel injectors up and push those in. Push the locks on. And lock them down. Make sure you put them in the right spot because you can swap them by accident. Do the other side. And lock these down. Good. And the alternator wire. Take that nut off. And attach that cable. And I'll snug that down. And snug that up. Now put that cover back on. Right there. Put the nut on. And we'll tighten that down. Just snug it up. bracket on. And put the bolts in. And 
and tighten those down. And snug that up. And take the cap, put the cap on the fuel rail. And the connector for the throttle body, line that up, lock that in. Now take the snorkel, line this up, put it over the air box. And on the throttle body. Down. You can take this hose right here, line that up, lock that in place. And the coolant hose, push that retainer in there, right there. And tighten the worm clamps down. I'll put the cover on and line it up in the back. And then push it down. Now take the negative cable and hook up the battery. And we'll tighten that down. And snug that up. You can grab the cable, give it a wiggle, make sure it's tight. Now that we're done, we're going to go to the ignition, turn the key on, and then shut it off, and then turn the key on again. That's going to prime the fuel system, because right now the fuel system's empty, there's air in there, and it's not going to start up right away. So you want to cycle it two or three times, and then you can start it up like normal. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.